In 1885, a chap called Carl Benz revealed what is often seen as the grandfather of the modern car, the Benz patent motor wagon. It had three wheels, a lever to steer, and a four-stroke engine of Benz's design tucked away at the rear. It was tricky to control and couldn't get up a hill without a push, but it was, in no small part, thanks to Mrs Benz undertaking what is now considered the first ever road trip, a hit. Not long after, another chap called Rudolf Diesel came up with an engine of his own. It was heavy and not quite suitable for use in cars. It did well in more industrial applications, though. Petrol became the fuel of choice for many, many years. It made a nice noise, allowed cars to go very quickly, and is still the petrol head's choice of fuel. Diesel is seen as the talky, if slow, fuel for people who say are a bit cheap. Which is why this Mercedes-Benz SLK 250 CDI makes little to no sense to me. Why would you have a sports car with a diesel engine? Okay, I'll admit it, the idea of a diesel sports car isn't entirely new. I mean, Audi's had a diesel lump in the TT for ages, and, well, this isn't exactly brand spanking new itself. But I want to understand what the appeal is with having a diesel sports car. On paper, it's quite rapid. 0 to 62 takes 6.7 seconds. It's got a top speed of 151 miles an hour, 201 brake horsepower, and 368 pound per foot of torque. Almost sporty. Well, quite sporty, actually. But then, you put your foot down, and all of a sudden, you find yourself inside an elderly smoker from the north. You get this kind of bleh, bleh, diesel noise. Just have a listen. Handling-wise, it's just fine. It feels as you'd expect a Mercedes sports car to feel. Planted, pleasant and easy to drive. This diesel isn't the kind of car that'll take its owner by the scruff of the neck and threaten to bog flush them if they step out of line. This is a car you waft in. This is a car you just put it into gear, let its amazing seven-speed auto do its thing. Seamless shift, it feels really, really good. And this isn't a drag car, that's for the AMG to do. So, its engine makes no sense and it's very lovely to drive. However, the main reason this car will find its way onto driveways is because of its looks. It's a bit pretty, isn't it? I mean, I, I really like the looks of this third generation one, because the first generation, well, that was designed almost entirely using a ruler. The second generation was supposed to be a facsimile of the SLR hypercar, but it wasn't all that much. It looked as though it was designed exclusively for Barbie, apart from the AMG version. That, that had an angry glint in its eye. But this, it's really, really good. The lines are really strong, which is always a bonus, because it gives a sort of muscular look. But also, it's very wide, and it looks a little bit, just a little bit, like the SLS supercar, which is always a bonus. SLK, by the way, stands for Sportlich, Leicht and Kurtz, which is sporty, light and short. And while the first one was certainly that, this one's, well, it's quite big. It's not exactly short, is it? Now what's good is the design of everything in here. It's so pretty, it's so, it's so beautifully put together. I mean, there's, there's lots of swoopiness, and these vents, these are straight off of the SLS AMG. And now they're, they're now a Mercedes standard, but still they're pretty cool. I've also got air scarf back here, so if I do decide to get the roof down in the winter, I've got my seat heater on to keep my bum from going cold, and then the air scarf, which blows warm air over your neck to make you feel warm, and so you don't get all chilly. I've got to say, it's a wonderful, wonderful car. It's very smooth, the steering is amazing, it's, it's decently weighted and it feels very nice. You get a decent amount of feedback. It brakes well, it corners incredibly well, and if you turn the traction control off, it can get a little bit slippery. As a sports car, as, as something to drive, it's really, really good, but the only sticking point to this car is its engine. And it feels quite quick, and you get all the torque in one big lump, but the one thing that really sells cars, for me at least, is the noise. And that's the one thing that the SLK can't deliver. It's noise. You just get this diesel noise and you think, oh my god, I'm trapped inside a bus.
If you get a petrol engine, you get the SLK 200, 250, 350, or even, if you're mad, the 55 AMG. You've got yourself a cracking car because it will have the sound to match the looks. And it will be, well, it's, it, you can't go wrong, I don't think. Diesel and a sports car, those are two things that really shouldn't go together, like chocolate and, and cheese. But it's one of those things that, you know, you really want to like and you really should like, but you just can't quite get your head around. With a petrol engine, the SLK is truly brilliant because as well as the amazing drive, you get the noise and the power curve that goes with a sports car. You feel like you're driving a little race car and you feel a little bit like a hero. But with the diesel, it just, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't quite gel. Something's just not quite right. And that's not really ideal. Go, 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 go.